What is going on guys, DBG here, and today we are going to be doing a tier list of the best budget cards in NBA 2K22, my team. So what do I consider budget cards? Basically, cards that are under 15k MT, or cards that could be getting gotten fairly easily from challenges. So, if you don't consider a few guys budget cards because they can't be purchased in the auction house, that's fine. Just disregard them. It's kind of hard to fill, find the criteria. Then in Domination, honestly, I don't want my console turned on right now. So, I kind of forgot what Domination words came when, so I just put three of the normal Domination. I don't think I put in any of the Historic Domination cards, but I put in a few of the normal ones because... Especially likes like Chris Boucher, that's a couple of hours, like, not barely a couple of hours grinding. Um, as well as that, there is... Daryl Griffith is on the list, because I thought, like, I got him in... A, I, did, I felt I did him slowly, and I got him in 2 hours and 47 minutes. I reckon you can probably get Daryl Griffith if you get a good TT online run. Um, I think you can quite easily get him in... Probably 210. Probably 210 if you get a bunch of the steals. So, um, yeah, anyway, now let's get on to it. First up, Chris Boucher. And I'm putting Chris Boucher right here in A tier. Also, in terms of token rewards, I'm going Ruby or lower. I'm putting any of the ones Ruby or lower because I think it's extremely easy to get your first 45 tokens. Or, it's like 60 tokens to get the Ruby tier. I think it's very easy to get your first 60 tokens. I get to that Ruby tier in, like, day one or day two. I think it's very, very easy. But we got Chris Boucher right here. I think Chris Boucher is a really, really good card. Like... His only problem is that he's just a little bit weak. In like an era of Shaq, Wilt, and Dikembe, I just don't see him being just that guy. I don't see him being like the best uh, center in the game anymore. But in, if you're playing against somebody running like a, a Baka, he can still run fine. Good shot blocker, good rebounder, good shooter. He just is that little bit weak. So it's hard to like put him... Uh, in the conversation for best overall centers, but I mean for budget. I mean he's a Derek Jones jr. 15 wins in TT offline very very quick Evo, so um, I'm going to uh, very easily very easily um, put in Put him into a tier Like his release is unbelievable. Like he's up base 5, which is one of my favorite releases in the game as well as that He's got the pro three behind the bank and just an all around good, good player. He did sell me in the first game of um, TTO that I lost this year, but again, I've lost like 13 games this year, so it really doesn't matter. Well, actually, it's a challenge. I lost like nine games this year, so the first one doesn't matter. He's really good. Derek White, I mean, I'm putting Derek White in eight here as well. Derek White is really, really good. So he shoots the ball relatively well. And his defense is really good. Like, he can actually guard ball. He's got good speed, can take it to the basket. Like, if we're looking right here at one of the better of these domination guys, he's definitely up there. Then Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles, I'm putting in D tier. I mean, his defense is mediocre. His defense is definitely... Or his defense is all right. His offense is mediocre. Three balls, meh. Mainly because of his release. Like a rough base and rough upper. Like Joe Ingles, I'm have I'm gonna have to put him in D tier. Miles Bridges, I think Miles Bridges is a little bit worse than Derek Jones Jr., but Miles Bridges is pretty good. He is very, very solid. So Miles Bridges is going to B tier. He shoots, he moves quite well. And he's just an all around decent, decent card. Like he's not ain't spectacular, but I think B tier is fine for him. Houston, I'm gonna put Houston in C tier. Houston doesn't have the defensive angles, but he's a way better shooter. Like, he's still got Ray Allen base. I don't know why I'm not that high on Houston, but decent speed, decent defense. Still has Ray Allen base. Still shoots the ball really well. And yeah, uh, belongs here in C. Iverson. I mean, D, E, D, E, D, E, D. I go D tier for Allen Iverson. I mean, you could definitely argue that he should be he should be a tier lower, but I mean, I think D tier is it's okay. I think for him, um, his movement is pretty good and he shoots the ball well, even with the not great three point rating. Roberson, Roberson is a fifty three ball, and he can't green. You, it's not greenable. 
But Roberson's a pretty good. Like Roberson is a pretty good um defender. Like I ran him offline at the start of the year and he was really good. Like you can put him on ball. If you're trying to play offline challenges and you're you don't want to waste a bunch of MT on contracts, especially when Spotlight Sims eventually come out, you're just like Okay, I've found a certain play. And what most of the time ends up happening is like you'll find out a certain play and just be like Okay, I'm running the play. I don't really care about Andre Roberson. So, I'm going to... Or, I don't really care about anyone but that one player. So, I just need a bunch of defenders who are cheap. He is a perfect player for that. Then we got Anthony Edwards. You know, B. I like Anthony Edwards a lot more than I thought I did. Like, I didn't like him. The day he came out, I was not a fan. I was not a fan at all. The day Anthony Edwards came out, I struggled big time with him. Like, I was I was high on every card in that set except for Edwards and Manu. And as time's gone on, I hate Manu more. But I genuinely like Anthony Edwards. I'm becoming a huge, huge fan of that card. His jumper is good. His dunking is good. Everything about that card is good. Baron Davis, I'm going to go B tier. He's like, imagine if Dame Lillard lost uh, his dribbling. So not lost dribbling. Imagine if he lost his, like, range. But gain defense. That's basically what you're getting here. He's got Dame Bay's very similar six. And just an all around, all around really, really good player. Lambier. I mean, I can't put him worthless here because you kind of have to respect him and you can't leave him wide open. But he's not great. He's really not great. Lambier is going to go E tier. Dandridge D. Does everything okay? Like, he's okay. Like, he shoots the ball moderately well. He dribbles moderately well. He defends moderately well. He kind of does everything all right. He was good at the very, very start of the year. And he's good in drafts because he does a little bit of everything. Guys like that are actually half decent in draft because they don't have a weakness, but he's not great. And again, he's a worthy clone. So if you don't like worthies, at least you're not going to like Dandridge. Boyan Bogdanovich. Now, I'm, cons I'm hovering between two. I'm going to put him B. But I'm very much hovering. Like, I think he's slightly better than Miles Bridges. But um, Boyan Bogdanovich is... He's a good shooter. A really solid perimeter defender. I don't really like him at the 4. Even though that's where I've been running him. Um, He's just a little bit undersized there. But he's good. Brook Lopez. D. I don't like Brook Lopez. He's slow. He can kind of shoot the ball. Um, He's just kind of slow. And his interior presence isn't what I would kind of like from a Brook Lopez card. Um, and it's not like Ruby Brook Lopez from last year where they gave him clamps. So for me, I'm going to put Brook Lopez in here into D tier, but he's good. Cade. Now Cade is going to go B tier. Cade's another player that he's got terrible. He's got like certain stats that look terrible, but they're not actually terrible. Like he's one of those guys with terrible perimeter defense, but he's got good length and good lateral. So it kind of makes up for it. So again, Cade Cunningham is... Just, he's just decent. I think there are better players out there. I think there are worse players out there. But I think Cade is very decent. Karis Levert. Hey, look, is Karis Levert as good as Derek White? Maybe. Maybe. Karis Levert's good. His jumper is very qu is quick. Like, quick this year feels like very quick last year. I'm not that high on it. I'm not that high on this card, but... Hmm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think, do I go A or B? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stick with A, but you just never know. Then we have got Chris Mullen. C. Chris Mullen is C tier. He is C tier. Okay, he has got Um He's a shooter. He's a shooter. He doesn't do anything else. He's he's very similar to Houston. He's gonna go C. Chuck Person. I think Chuck Person's a little bit better. I think Chuck Person as best player in uh, C tier. I'm gonna give him C tier. I might like, I think you might be able to argue that he's here, but I'm gonna put him highest of C. Cliff Hagen, getting to A tier. Cliff Hagen is very, very solid. 
Like he's a very good shooter, a good defender. His overall game is very, very good. And yeah, just a player that I'm a big, big fan of. Okay, so I'm gonna have to put some players in worthless here because we've no one there right now. I'm gonna put in first player in worthless, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is horrific. This Dwayne Wade card is absolutely shockingly bad. For that reason, I'm putting it in worth it. Like some people, I know some people might like this Dwayne Wade. I'm not one of those people. And I want to find who those people are. And uh, I will call them crazy. To their face. If you think this Dwayne Wade is a good card. He is shocking. He's absolutely shocking. Is he on his own? I actually, I didn't put like LeBron, LeBron Sapphire, or Kevin Durant Emerald, who I was meant to put on this list. Just to get guys in the worthless there. Um, this guy's too chicken to put in worthless there. I think Dwayne Wade's there on his own. Like Clyde is probably, outside of shooting, Clyde's probably the worst player here. I mean, maybe Kawhi, but I think Kawhi's defense is too good to put in worthless. I mean, yeah. Dwayne Wade. You're in there on your own. You're in there on your own. And worthless here. But yeah, Clyde's got really bad speed, really bad lateral. The difference is that Clyde is so chicken. Base 5 for me is one of the best releases in the game. And for that reason, he's going to eat here. Corey Kispert. Get into S. I mean, in reality, get into A. But <laughs> Corey, I literally run my offense through Corey Kispert. I, I don't know why, but I do. Like, whenever I play my team unlimited, I literally just run through Kispert. Like, it doesn't make much sense. I know it's not the smartest thing in the world to do, but it works for me. And if it works for me, there's no point stopping doing it. So, yeah, um, Corey Kispert is, he's doing, he's been doing quite well for me. And by quite well, I mean he's just been a demigod. He, he's the best shooter in the game, in my opinion. Right, Allen base on quick. He's got a lot of shooting badges, an 89 three ball, and also has got 80 lateral and decent speed. Kispert is just, man, he's incredible. He takes up, like, his gravity is so big. You're in a couple of three-point plays for him. Your team's whole defense sets up just purely to stop the three-point shot. Then you can start doing some other stuff. You can get into the post. You can start rim running. But as long as Kispert's there going for that three-point shot, then trust me, you're going you're gonna to have an option. Dame Lillard. A. Dame on offense is still insanely good. He's still insanely good. Like his handle's good. His behind the back is good. His three-point shooting's exceptional. Like he did he carried me through the draft. Like he really carried me through the draft. Again, the only reason that I haven't I've lost the only games that I've lost in the draft were like against God squads. And I just couldn't come back with Dame. But Dame Lillard, his jumper is exceptional in terms of offensive point guards i mean i still think he's top five in the game because i don't move that well like i don't dribble that well so i'm not the greatest with like an iverson or a Kyrie. so if you're not an iverson or Kyrie guy i mean name is pretty damn good if you're not one of those two if you're not using one of those two guys so yeah he's gonna go eight here then we got damon jones c damon jones is a little bit undersized and literally all he does is shoot the ball all he does is shoot. He doesn't bring much else to the floor at all. Like, he's not going to really handle it too much. He's not going to go to the basket. He's not going to play much defense. He's going to hit shots. Is that very important? Of course it is. It is extremely, extremely important to be able to hit shots. But either way, Damon Jones is going to be a great card. He's just very, very one-dimensional. Okay, then we've got Dan Issel. I'm going E tier with Dan Issel. He hits the mid-range at a high rate. Not because of his rating, just because of his release. He's a little bit undersized, and I, I don't know. I just think he's, he's he's mediocre. He's mediocre at best. Okay, then we got Dario Saric. I'm going to go B tier for Dario Saric. I think he's a step lower than Chris Boucher, but I do rate Dario Saric quite highly. Like, I know a lot of people a lot of people are not that high on Dario Saric. For me, I think he's a really, really good player. And also, like, a very, very good shooter. And just all around, like, he just all, all around, he's just good. He's just an all around good, good player. So, interior is good. Defensively, he's mediocre. Three-point shooting is good. And just like a slightly worse Chris Boucher. Uh, our first S-tier player, Darius Miles. 
Miles is brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant is this Darius Miles. An elite um, rim runner, dunker, defender, an elite shooter as well. Darius Miles well and truly, in my opinion, belongs on this list in up at the top in S tier. So then we have got Daryl Griffith. Daryl Griffith is going Ruby Daryl Griffith. I'm going to put in C tier. He's not terrible. He's not great either. He's just kind of meh. But Diamond Daryl Griffith, considering you can get this grind done in like two and a half hours, I've got to put Diamond Daryl Griffith in S tier. I hope that his it's a case of every second week or at least two, three times a season, we get these season lifetime agenda awards. Like I'm hoping that like a couple of times a season we see them. But um, if not, it's not the end of the world. Daryl Griffith is a good shooter, a good defender. Like there's a reason why he comes off the bench at the two. Like again, he doesn't start, Kispert starts for me, but I'm not gonna say Kispert's better than Daryl Griffith because Daryl Griffith is just better. Okay, so Darren Collison. I'm gonna go C tier as of right now, but my God, Darren Collison was so good when the game came out. Collison is like Trey Young starter card, but even well, basically the same. I, I he's like Silver Chef. His movement is so fast with the ball. His release is super quick. This guy is insanely good. Okay, DSJ. I want to go A tier. I'm gonna go B. Like he he again plays for me. Because in a way, stamina is on point guards. I normally play him for the last minute of the second quarter and the last, or occasionally the last minute of the first. Like he will play a couple of minutes. If I'm rotate, if I end up sprinting too much and rotating my point guards badly in their boat, like in the 70s on cam on stamina, I'm gonna play Dennis Smith Jr. for a minute or two in a game. It doesn't matter what situation I'm in. If I'm an unlimited, if I'm sweating, if it's a two point game, Dennis Smith Jr. plays in most games. Is he the best goal in the game? No, Corey Kispert is. But, I mean, Dennis Smith Jr., he's not quite A tier, but he's pretty, pretty damn good. Um, Darren Williams, C. Uh, no, Darren Williams, yeah, C, he's fine. He's all around, he's an all around fine card. There's not, there's not too much great with this card. There's also not too much bad with this card. So, I'm going to go and put Darren Williams into C tier. Devontae Graham. B. Devontae Graham is a B tier player. Again, a shooter. A very, very solid shooter. Does not do much else. Like, I used him in limited at the weekend because his defense is so bad that he brings your team overall down. Is he better than Monte Morris? I don't know. They both have Trey Burke base. I'm pretty sure they both have Trey Burke upper. He's like Iverson without the dunk. And without as good ball handling. But yeah, he's solid. He shoots like Iverson, basically. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then we got um, Richard Van Arnell. Clay Thompson release on quick. He's going B tier as well. I mean, he just doesn't miss when he's wide open. Like, is he the best card in the world? No, but like not missing is quite a good... It's quite a good thing for a player to have. If a player doesn't miss, it's a pretty good thing. Nikembe Matumbo. Now you see, I'm gonna put, let, hear me out. If you need, you know what, I'm not gonna actually put him in, in an S because there is another guy that I think is better. But up until yesterday, if you needed somebody to deal with the Wilson, the Shacks of the world, especially just mashing in the post and dunking on you, you couldn't run a Baca. You couldn't run anybody. But you could run Dikembe. Like, you couldn't really run any stretch big, but you can run Dikembe. This Dikembe is basically as good, good defensively as the incredible um, Diamond one. The only difference is that this one can't shoot the three ball, whereas the Diamond one couldn't. That's the real difference. And there's obviously there is like a plus 20 in speed. But still, still, I personally believe that this um, Dikembe belongs in A tier. You could argue him S as well. Drazen, I mean, Drazen's just going to shoot the ball. You know, screw. It. I'm gonna. I think I've set a precedent for just shooters in C tier. Duncan Robinson. I mean, is do I even? Am I gonna put any more two guards in S tier? 
I'm sorry. Kispert. Kispert's going to S tier. He's just so... There's just... He's just so good at one thing. Like, he is the best player in the game at one specific thing. And he's not a terrible defender either. He's not terrible. Like, I've used him... I've used him guarding a few good players. He's not a terrible defender. He... Does one thing well. And only one thing well. But that one thing he does well, he does better than every other player in the game. So... Like, I use Kispert over Duncan Robinson. I know I shouldn't. I know it doesn't make sense, but I do. I play Kispert over Dow Griffin. Does it make sense? No, but it's how, what works for me. So, yeah. Lamelo is losing it out in a spot in, a to, in S tier to Corey Kispert. Fred Van Vliet S. Like, 15k was my cutoff point. Fred Van Vliet has been hovering above and below 15k. Again, my console is currently not on, and I'm just didn't want i didn't check these prices the last that i checked he was under he might be a little bit over now but fred van vliet is like one of the best point guards in the game like he's probably a top six or seven point guard he shoots he handles it well his defense is very very good he's a goal mismatch expert and again six one a little bit of a liability in the defensive end but i mean or defense end if he's not as long as he's not guarding like a Kyrie. Um, he's fine guarding like a Kyrie, but if he gets switch glitch, he's kind of screwed. So, um, yeah, then we are going to go Jalen Green. I think Green is the best of all these, um, players not named the metal ball of all the Sapphires. For the four Sapphires and the Colossal set, I think Jalen Green is the best. Do I think he's that much better than Cade or that much better than Anthony Edwards? No. I thought, initially, I thought he was way, way better than Anthony Edwards. Like, I genuinely, genuinely did not think, so I thought he was way better than, um, yeah, Anthony Edwards. But I thought that Cade was probably better than him. But now Jalen Green's comfortably the best for me. Jalen Rose. I mean, he's fine. He's not as bad as I initially thought he was. Uh, you know, I'm going to move Rose up. I'm going to move Darren Williams down. I'm going to put him in uh, C tier. Good release. Good speed. Not great defense, but he's got good height. Goatmir. Goatmir is going B tier. He's not going to go A, because I think Dame's just that quite a, that little bit better. But, like, Goatmir plays good defense. Guy's got 58 badges. Um, He's got, like, range. He's got base 22. Um, He's got chef. He's got clamps. He was my point guard for a little bit, and he was brilliant for me. He was absolutely brilliant for me. Like, he was a good servant for the team, but, I mean... You just gotta move on at some stage. Then we got James Donaldson. I'm gonna go B tier because he's just slightly worse than Dikembe. James Worthy. A. I would be tempted. If he had a more consistent jumper, I would be tempted to move up to S. Like, everything else he does except for that jump shot is great. And then there's some days I love the jump shot. There are some days I absolutely, absolutely love the jump shot. But, uh... There are other days I just can't green at all with him. And sometimes he sometimes I hate it. He sells me and I hate him. Other times he's just my best player. So I'm gonna put him there. Uh ja Morant, I mean he's actually fine in some weeks of limited. I used him in limited this week. I used his duo big country. And again, dunks on Dunks on pretty much everybody with that duo. Without the duo, he's not great, but once he gets a duo, he's very good. But again, the duo in four means you have to use big country. So, yeah, Ja is going to go into D tier. Then we got the Jet Terry. Jason Terry. He's going to go B. Offensively, he's not that far off Dame, honestly. Defensively, he's even worse, somehow even worse than Dame. Then we have got Jerry Sloan. I'm putting Jerry Sloan in A tier. I'm not that high on... Well, I'll say, I'm, I'm that high on Jerry Sloan. I don't, I don't know why I said I'm not that high, but, like... Again, it, yeah, I get it. It was two weeks ago, the last player's line of tournament I played in. But, I mean, I literally ran Jerry Sloan. I ran Jerry Sloan on ball with my bench lineup. Is he going to guard ball with my bench lineup? No, not anymore. But, like, that's nothing really to do with Jerry Sloan being bad more than the fact that I got ML Carr and Walt Frazier since then. So, again, he's a shoot, a mediocre shooter. Great defender. 
the big problem with him is that it's only a 75 three ball like he's got like the 90 lateral quickness he's got a good release the problem is that his three ball is only that like 75 rating so even with his like deep shooting badges limit a spot up doesn't really do anything you just gotta be able to time that release properly to hit anything with him he's not gonna hit too many whites so stack s One of these two. B. I'll go B. I'll go B. I'm kind of tight. I'm just kind of tight between the two of these. Actually, no, I'll go low A for Stackhouse. B Stackhouse. His release is good. His dunking is good. His defense is okay. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's a fair spot for him. Sorry about the pause right there. Jojo White. Jojo is going to go into... I would be very tempted to go A, but I'll go B. He's very he's closer to Baron Davis than he is to name. So I'm going to go B tier for Jojo. John Barry. I mean D, but he's pretty, he's a very solid Emerald token. Award. I don't think he's got his Collison. But like... But for an Emerald to be on this list, it's pretty decent. Jermaine Jones, B tier. Uh, no, go C, go C. He's he's like Chuck Person. He's like slightly worse Chuck Person. I don't know why I was saying B tier. I just thought, you know what, he's he's overall solid, but like if I've got Chuck Person to C, he's gonna see. Kareem, if James Donald wherever James Donaldson is, if he's in B, Kareem's in B. Carl Anthony Towns. Now it is a tough one. I'm gonna put him in S. Purely because he's by far the best budget offensive center in the game. I get it. Like you could, if you want to argue Blake's a budget player. If you want to argue Blake's a budget player, then yeah, Blake is the best budget center in the game. But Blake is not cheap. He's not cheap at all. So we we have got we have got Cat in here as the premier premier budget center, but a really good shooter, really good interior. His just defense leaves a lot to be desired. Honestly, he's like a completely juiced up Marvin Bagley. That's basically what he is. Kawhi Leonard. I mean, I'm going to put Kawhi Leonard in like E tier. He, he plays defense and he barely shoots. Kemp Bazemore. I'm in D tier. Kevin Durant, C tier. Now, these three guys are kind of irrelevant. These are guys that kind of got outdated on day one. They're guys that got like dropped from my team on day one. So, yeah, it's mad. We have gone through nearly 30 minutes of players, and we are still not even halfway through the alphabet. Okay, LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball, He's he lost his spot in S tier to Corey Kisper. I don't want to have three two guards, even though Corey Kisper is a uh, primary small forward. But, yeah, LaMelo lost his spot in S tier to Corey Kisper. Larry Keenan, C. It's greenable, but it's a 59 three ball. Good shooter. Or sorry, not a good shooter. Good mid range shooter. Moderately good defender. Decent player build. I mean, he, he's okay. He's meh. And we got Larry Markinen. Larry Markinen. I don't know why I'm going D. He's, he's like very, very clearly A tier. Offensively, he's fantastic. Defensively, the guy doesn't play that end of the floor. But I mean, pick and pop shooters are not much better than him for his price. Then we have got Manu Ginobili. I mean, just at a principle, I'm putting him a worthless. Does he belong in worthless? Probably not. Like, this guy is a trash can, though. Like, because he's a ruby, and because he's a promo ruby, and they literally wait, like... Every card in Colossal was good and usable, except for Manu. So the fact that they wasted a slot for what could have been a good and usable card in that set, especially because all the like most of the rubies and lower were young players, and instead of giving it to Manu, I don't know, we could have got a Evan Mobley card. We could have got Jonathan Kaminga. Can you who else we could have got? Like even a heck, even a Davy Mitchell. That pack didn't come with a point. That pack didn't come with a Sapphire point guard. 
So maybe we codify Dame and then I like a, as I say, Davy Mitchell, but that didn't really, he, he wouldn't have been a Ruby. And I'll screw it, make Kate a Ruby and give us Davy and Mitchell a Sapphire. And we're, we're all happy. We're all happy then. But no, we have to get this bomb Manu Ginobili. Marvin Bagley. Hmm. I'm caught in two minds of Marvin Bagley. Because there's a lot of time I feel he's here. And there's sometimes I actually would think he's S tier. So I'm going to put him right bang smack in the middle in B tier. Like, when limited with Sapphires and lower, I used him as my center to start every game. And then... I, most games, I hated him. There was a re, I would whip him off for Kareem very quickly into the game. He'd either miss a board, ball would go through his hand, he'd miss an easy block because he's got a 50 rating. So that happened quite a lot. Then, Michael Porter Jr., A. MPJ, he benefits from his position. There are not that many great cheap power forwards in this game. There are really not. I, his jumper is pretty nice. His movement is not good for me. Like, his speed rating, he should should have been so fast. And for me, he just felt slow and clunky every time. Defensively, he's okay. But, like, MPJ, if you're doing anything other than just kind of standing there and shooting the ball with MPJ, I don't, I don't really see the point in that, to be completely, completely honest. So, um, then we have got Mike Conley. Mike Conley's going to go like B tier. I like Conley. Don't love Conley. I think he's he's okay. He's okay. He does a job. And I think if you want to move him down to C tier, that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm going to give him C tier. I think he's good. Mitchell Robinson. For me, he's just worse Rudy Gobert. I'm going to put him C. He still 7-1 in block shots. He does his job. Nick Anderson. A shooter, but not as good as these guys. D tier. It's weird. He was a 3 and D guy in 2K. Made him so that he can't play defense. Vucevic. Vucevic is like, imagine marking him, but worse at everything. C tier. Because he's a stretch. Okay, Siakam. S. S. His versatility. He, if somebody is constantly trying to trigger switch glitches... You can put him at center. He can kind of guard big men. He can guard, he can guard post point guards. He can guard wings very, very well. His jumper is pretty nice. Is Siakam the best player in the world? No. Is Siakam a very solid player? Yes. Is Siakam someone that was in my squad until literally yesterday when I got ML Carr? Yeah. He's been in my squad from launch till yesterday. Like, I know Lamelo's still in my squad and he's currently in A tier. But at the same time, Lamelo is like my, my last guy off the bench. So, I'm trying to think for my actual squad, he's in my squad, he's in my squad, he's in my squad. He's not in my squad because I got Kuzi and Frazier. He's not in my squad because I got Pettit and Abaka, and he's in, he was in my squad. So, these first three guys are in my squad, and then Lamelo's in my squad. Everyone else has been pretty much replaced in my squad. Patty Mills, I mean, he's. He's going to go C tier purely because he's one of, if not the best, offline players in the game. But I can't put him in the higher. Paul Westfall. Okay, so Paul Westfall. I mean, a lot of people are going to probably say A tier. I'm going to put Westfall in B tier. I think he's that little bit small for A tier. He was really good on launch day, though. He really was. But, like... If you're going to be 6 foot 4 and play at that 2 guard position, you really got to be like a, a Daryl Griffith type player. His release is good though. Ray Allen base, good ball handling. Again, can't play at the point guard position. If he could play a point guard, it, this would be a different story. I think later on in the year, we could get a really, really nice Paul Westfall card. But he's going to go B tier. Rick Smith's S. The reason why Dikembe Bamatumbo is not S tier is because of Rick Smith's. Rick Smith is just better to Kembe. Dude is seven foot four, blocks every single shot. And the difference between Rick Smith and the Kembe is Rick Smith can actually do something on offense other than mash. Like Rick Smith hits post fades. He hits running off the dribble fades. He can shoot post step back jump shots. He can post hook people from deep. He can still drop step and dunk on everybody. He can play bully ball if needed. He can mash and dunk. He does everything. He's a much less limited on offense, um, Dikembe, 
Although I will admit this, the Kembe is quite a bit better on defense than Rick Smith. The problem is, is that like the Kembe's like great defense does not make up for the fact that his offense is terrible. Whereas um, Rick Smith's defense is really good and his offense is also really, really good. So Rick Smith is going to go into S tier for me. Then we have got Roger Mason. Roger Mason is going to go C tier with the Snipers. I don't mind him. I don't think he's awful, but I'm, I don't mind him. I'm going to put Chuck Person up one tier as well on the B tier. Um, Ron Harper, just for his deep, just he's the best defensive guard in as that you can get on a budget. I know he's technically tokens, but like still, I'm gonna put him on budgets. But Ron Harper is really good. Again, he's difficult to shoot with. I have not figured out how to do it. I know there are some people that can shoot with Ron Harper, like RCA. I have not figured out how to do it yet. I really, really struggle. But Ron Harper again, his movement is mediocre but his defense is really where he excels he's like a poor man's wolf Ranger. rudy gobert rudy gobert b tier he's the best shot blocker in the game not named mark eaton or rick smith like obviously those two guys are the two best shot blockers in the game followed by rudy gobert rudy gobert inside mashing is so super op like i started play i nearly lost to a dude in tto and all he did was just get in the post Spam the square button until I press triangle and just dunked it on me or scored a weird glitchy layup Rudy Gobert. For that reason, I'm putting Gobert in B tier. I really enjoy that card. Rudy Janovich just, he's going to go D tier. He's just another mediocre guy who can kind of do a bit of everything and shoot the three ball moderately well. He's just a little bit better above the advantage. Sean Elliott, A. Sean Elliott is like a budget version of the Danny Granger card. A good shooter. Good movement, good defender, and again they gave him that Danny Granger base. So he's got he's got pretty much everything. He has got pretty much everything. Then we got Seth Curry. Seth slightly better than Patty Mills, but does not offer anything on defense at all. So I'm gonna have to go see it here. Spencer Haywood. He's six eight. I'm gonna go B tier with Haywood because he he does actually kind of shoot the ball and he runs quite very well for a center. Problem is, he's just he's just gonna get bullied and eaten alive. The meta is not this guy this year. Like, there's no more Draymond Green at center meta like in NBA 2K21. The, the tall centers reign supreme. Steph. I'll go Steph B tier just because he has the curry slide. I think that might even be high. I think that genuinely might be high, be high for Steph Curry. Steve Smith, I mean, he does his job. He shoots the ball. C tier. It's not like he's bad by any means, but he's not spectacular. Terrence Ross. A lot of these new guys are going to be in these higher tiers. So I'm going to put Terrence Ross in A tier. Again, for Terrence Ross, Carl Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert, it literally it doesn't matter. They're, they're all the same. But Terrence Ross's dunking is very, very nice. His three-point shooting is nice. His defense is it's not bad either. It is not bad at all. And just all-around play... I think he's good. I'm not as high on him as most people are, because I know some people are really, really high on him. But at the end of the day, T. Ross is a very solid player to have in A tier. Thaddeus Young, uh, E. I don't think he's good at all. Tim Hardaway Jr. I'm gonna go B. I would be very, I would be very tempted to go into A tier, but I'm gonna go high B. Tim Hardaway Jr. Great behind the back, great jump shot. Um. His stats aren't the greatest, but he plays way above his stats. So, for me, Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to go into B tier. Okay. Then we've got Wally Zerbiak. So, Wally Zerbiak. I mean, he just shoots the ball, but he doesn't even shoot the ball as well as these guys. So, I'm going to go D tier for Wally Zerbiak. If you don't offer anything but shooting and you don't do that particularly well, you're going to go to this tier. So, Julian Silgowski's big body D tier or B tier. And we'll be free B tier. I've got Jojo White. We'll be free. He's going to go B tier. So anyway, yeah, that is pretty much it, lads. That is the tier list. Let me know which guy, which ones you guys agree and disagree with. I know most of you are going to disagree with Kispert. But again, Kispert is a demon. If you guys want to see why I like Kispert so much, watch either of my last two videos. My No Money Spam video earlier today. Or my video on the uh, Rick Smiths. Like, I'm telling you, Corey Kispert is that dude. He really is that dude. So, uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. That is the video, lads. This is the full tier list. 
And this is going to be the last tier list for the month. We're going to be back on Saturday with the point guard tier list. Anyway, that was the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.